it does not appear that we have any guests except for Megan. Um, Megan was our one applicant um, to replace Paul Putney for Randolph School Board. Um, we'll talk a little bit when we get into the OSSD meeting um, about the process for appointing. Uh, Megan, there's some quirks that are happening in terms of the law right now um, because folks were so focused on COVID that they didn't um, re-up uh, an amendment that, that they should have during the, um, the normal session um, of the legislature. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, so it doesn't look like we have any guests to hear petitions from. Um, so the first order of business would be to nominate and then have the, the board vote um, to potentially uh, put a new chair into place for the RTCC board. I nominate Ashley Lincoln uh, to be the chair of the RTCC board. Second. second. So we have a nomination. We have a second. Um, any discussion? Votes vote. Um, all those in favor say yay. 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 It looks like it's unanimous. I don't know if I, do I have the ability to vote? Nope. <laughs> 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 I've been scrambling around all day. I'm just getting my head together. So I'm going to turn things over. Great. Uh, do you, you have a copy of that? I do. You're good to go. I have it all in front of me. Thank you. And I'll actually introduce uh, Felicia. We'll talk a little bit about the enrollment report. Sure. So I think I've met everybody. I'm Felicia. I'm the new director of RTCC this year. Um, kind of a, a big year to start a new role as an administrator. I, I was an administrator last year, but I was the assistant director at Stafford. So um, this is kind of a, a big step to come into a COVID year and open up a school. Um, but I'm really proud of my staff and how our reopening went. I think it went really, really smoothly. I think we planned um, our contingencies quite well, and um, we've had a good start, a good first week. So hopefully that will keep on going. Would you like to, Great. to tell you a little bit about myself or? Yes. Yes. So please tell us about yourself. Okay. So um, I'm a Randolph native. I grew up here in Randolph, went to this high school. Um, my parents are both educators in the district. And uh, it always was my dream to come back and eventually be able to serve my home community. So I'm super excited to be able to do that. Uh, but I've been in technical education since 2008. Uh, I was a media arts teacher for most of that time, and then last year I was the assistant director at Stafford. So I've been in, this is my third technical center, so I've got a pretty good view of what's happening around Vermont in the other technical centers. So that's me in a nutshell. Great. Well, thank you, Felicia. We are really happy to have you here, and welcome. Um, if you could go on and speak to us a bit about the enrollment numbers that are in the packet. Sure, sure. So right now, um, our enrollment has gone up from 108 in July to 115 as of today. Um, I do know there's a couple of applications in the works, so I think that number is continuing to grow. Um, you know, ideally, uh, that is still a low number. I think our budget was built on enrollment of 127. Um, so we're, we're still below what I think has been past precedent over the last few years. Um, but my goal, it, all in all, is to raise enrollment to at minimum 140. Um, probably won't happen this year, but we're working on it, and um, we've established a relationship with TFS, which is, um, let's see what that stands for. Actually, I can't even remember what that stands for right now, but it's with Mark Perna. He's a national um, recruitment, enrollment, and retention specialist. He's awesome. Um, so we have got a new online application system that's going to be um, starting or be ready for students to apply come November. Um, we have worked with him to change our timeline. It has been past precedent that we weren't even recruiting until February and therefore I think you know we have some issues surrounding that um, that we're seeing play out kind of this year. But to have our numbers pretty solid before contracts come out I think is critical. Um, so that was my number one goal. Um, my other goal in starting early is that it gives us a lot more time to really be specifically recruiting for programs that might have low enrollment in that later window. Um, so we've had some, some time with him. He's actually going to be doing an all-day PD with a select group of staff members and administrators from the building. And um, 
that's going to be in October, October 9th, and we're going to really flesh out what our enrollment or recruitment strategy is going to be. A lot of it really centers around the timeline, but some of it centers around direct mailing and reaching kids in different ways than we've tried in the past. Um, a piece of it is also starting our outreach for middle school um, and really bringing that to kind of the forefront so kids are thinking about technical education long before they're ever um, thinking about the application process. So, Hello, everyone. <laughs> We're outside trying to get in. We're by the main office. <laughs> okay. We'll come get you. Patch is coming down. So, yeah, so enrollment, you know, I feel good that we've captured some kiddos here at the end, and I, and I think we're still getting that at this point. So. That's great. Are there any questions for um, Felicia about enrollment? I think COVID really impacted this year's numbers, you know, just because I think we missed that recruitment window because it happened right in the midst of recruitment. So. Yeah, I know that um, we had the discussion last year. I know that a lot of students last year were a little bit nervous about what the fall the was going to look like, and they were afraid, you know, if I'm coming to a technical center, I want to be in person if I can. Um, and they were afraid that that wasn't going to be the case, so I think that had a pretty good impact. And uh, that was a big part of our reopening plans. You know, as I was looking at how we were going to make sure that we we're offering a really solid program, it was important that you know, we remember why kids are in technical education, and that's the hands-on piece. So therefore, um, we ended up making sure that when kids are in the building, they are in their program hands-on, and that their remote days are more for academics and other work that they can do for their programs remotely, um, so that they get that piece of the puzzle. I think once they knew that, that helped their numbers through the, the latter part of the summer. Mm -hmm. So what programs are struggling uh, as far as numbers going? Sure. Let me just pull out my... So <clears throat> I'd say right now, um, pre-tech is really probably not going to happen this year because we can't get out into to schools. So that's uh, an unfortunate thing. But at the same time, it's kind of a blessing um, because as I was looking at the program that was developed, it really wasn't developed well yet. And when we start going and out into the schools and trying to get folks to be a part of this pre-tech program, I think we really need to know what we're doing first. So um, I'm having Craig Fuller, our um, instructor for that program, really look at the program and develop a, a solid curriculum. Um, the other piece of the puzzle is right now it's very specific to STEM-related careers. And I think that given our enrollment issues, I think we need to broaden that to be a bit more broad to the center and different career pathways. So I've asked him to kind of think about how he develops that curriculum so that he can address the multitude of pathways that are available at RTCC. Um, the other piece of the puzzle is him looking at the outreach to the middle schools. Um, so really, that's gonna, it's going to be a year of development for that program. Um, so that's one program that has zero students in it right at this time. Um, we started out electrical this year. That was a new program. Um, it's kind of a success story because when we started this summer, we had four students. We now have eight and another student looking at it today. So I see that program growing um, without a whole lot of effort. I think it's a, a needed field and I think there's going to be a lot of interest once kiddos know that we offer it. Um, so that is doing pretty well, but at this point, if you're looking at the numbers, it's one of the lower programs. Um, right now, Graphic Arts has only four students in it. Um, that, along with Film, which has zero, has led me to really think about how we are going to move forward. Um, this is the last year of Graphic Arts. It will be closing at the end of this year. Historically, Film has done well. So we're going to give one last good faith effort with one arts program. Um, but what I've asked Carlos to do is to diversify his program. Um, we've had a couple of inquiries about broadcasting and how that might play into it. Um, we also could potentially roll in some of the uh, media arts that happen within the graphic arts program into that curriculum. So that's another program that is in development or redevelopment, we'll say, this year. Um, let's see here. Advanced manufacturing at this time has five. It started out the year with four, it went down to three, and then went up to five. 
Um, and again, that student that was looking at electrical today is also looking at advanced manufacturing, so I'm not sure which direction um, that student might end up going. Um, I think advanced manufacturing, a piece of it is just that when kids think manufacturing, they don't really understand um, its relation to STEM and like making things. Uh, I, I just think it's a perception issue and that we just need to kind of get out there and show them what it really is all about. Um, and a piece of that is also just getting kids in to, to see what is going on there, the tools and the, the you know, 3D printers and all of the awesome um, pieces of equipment that they would get to use in there. Um, so we are looking at possibly retitling that program. Uh, I don't have a title for you yet because we've thrown around a number of ideas, but I think that we need to kind of think about how it's branded and, and how kids perceive it based on, on the name. Um, and those are the, the programs that really right now we're just really kind of looking at. Um, I would like to start a dental assisting program next year. And that is a high demand uh, field. There is no other program in this area. The closest one for high school is up in Essex. So I feel like we would draw in a wide uh, variety of people from beyond even our sending area for this program, kind of like Diesel does. So um, that's sort of short term programming changes at this point. So I just have one more question. Sure. Um, you talked about students looking at the program at, as recent as today. Mm -hmm. How long do people have to enroll within the start of the school year? You know, I think we have a, uh, that's a good question, Linda, I might defer to you on this one. <laughs> uh, being new, I'm not really sure, um, but I would say that, you know, once we really start getting into the meat of the content, it gets more difficult. I think we probably have about a two week window. Okay. That would be that yeah, would be where I would say at that point, you know, we've kind of started to do safety work, and um, it's really not possible for a student to come in and not do that safety piece. Okay. Thank you. I'm not sure what you want to Okay. Yeah. So that was. So I think that with your enrollment discussion, we also touched upon the agenda item of transitions from 20 to 21. So yeah. We're, Unless you had anything else additionally In to terms speak. of opening, or like the reopening, or in terms of just like sort of pro programmatic changes? So I'm not so sure. I'm not sure either. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I'm sorry. On so, the agenda, the, it just says transition to 2020, yeah. 2021. I, I took that as sort of the reopening. The program, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah, and so I think I have covered pretty much everything that is sort of on the horizon at this point. Okay. Yeah. All right, sorry. Um, oh, that's good. So the next is the Perkins V approval. If you were yes, Perkins V. Perkins V. I would love so, to talk about that one. <laughs> that was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> if you don't mind. She knows what I uh, go through the time. So this was my first time um, actually writing the Perkins grant. Um, Jason did write it before he left and was required to do one revision um, before July 1st, which he did. Um, but it, it came back to me um, for more revisions, and at that time I really took a, a deep dive into what was written in the plan and thinking about, you know, kind of our potential, um, you know, the potential things that we want to change programmatically and looking ahead to how we're going to deal with our, you know, recruitment. And so I made a significant amount of changes to it, and it's taken about four different rounds of revisions, but as of, like, I don't know, four o'clock this afternoon, I got the final, like it's been approved, it's just gotta go through a couple more signatures and we're good. Um, but I did include in your packet um, the budget. Over the next four years, this plan, what's different about Perkins 5 from past years is that it requires us to do a four-year plan. And um, so over the course of four years, we're talking about um, $552,000, or approximately, or 553 if we want to round up. So it's a significant amount of money that really supports our center. Um, my goal, essentially, is I really don't want to have staffing in that Perkins plan. Um, right now, we're not in a position to have that. Um, so over the next four years, you're going to see some staffing. Um, for example, we're going to phase out and include in the local budget the math and the literacy after um, 2022. And then I have put in there um, a science integration salary with the idea that we are also being held accountable for how students test on their science exam. And at this point, we don't have a science specialist, and I think that would be really important for us to add into um, the mix. And you'll also see that there is um, 
some funds in there for the new programs that I talked about earlier. And I actually really only talked about dental assisting. Um, if things go well, the following year, I would like to open plumbing. And that would be, um, I think, a really well-rounded center with a lot of opportunities for kids that are in high demand. Um, so you'll see some of that in there as well. And you'll see a lot of um, consult with TFS, which is the Mark Perna work. Um, he actually was in, he worked with Rutland, uh, Stafford Technical Center, where I was last year. And they were in a similar position with low enrollments. And at this point, they have uh, a waiting list for every single program. So I think his process works, and we have to sort of trust it. Um, I will be bringing him to the Central Vermont community in November. He's going to do a virtual presentation that can have up to 5,000 people. He is an amazing speaker, and he talks about the shifting paradigm in education and how kids learn today. Um, so we'll have a lot more publication on that to come. And that's included as well in the Perkins plan. So what's the timeline on the Perkins Grant? In terms of like, it's, it's a so yearly, so it's, it's a four year plan, but every okay. year you have the opportunity to, or you need to go ahead and say what your yearly budget is. So although I've made some choices here, that can be amended um, throughout the year. So it's approved for four years? So this it's, year is It's approved for yearly. Okay. So every year she has, a, they, they're called investments, what we want to spend the money on. So she decides, which she's kind of outlined here, what the investments yeah. are going to be. Um, and then the application process is providing the justification, and then it's this back and forth. Oh, we didn't like the fact that you used the word and instead of or in this location. I mean, it's that yeah, detail, but well, it'll bounce back and forth a bunch of times. But it's um, substantively approved at this point in time, okay. which yeah, means right. we may need to still work, work on some of the wording, but we have access to the funds where we should be able to use the funds for what we have planned for. And at this point, I think I'm beyond substantially. I think I, I saw approved. Yeah. I saw approved tonight, so I was a step in. Well, the, the last person that goes through is the business manager there, so that's and the that'll, you know, if, if it's not to the penny, you know, the yep. summary page doesn't add up to the penny of the, the discrete pieces, then you might hear something. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but the the thing that's different also about the Perkins Five plan is that. It requires us to do a local needs assessment, and that really drives everything that you put in that plan. So our local needs assessment really had a lot around the enrollment piece and access. Um, one of the big barriers to, I think, students coming to the tech center today that didn't exist years ago was school consolidation. Um, what's happening is if you looked, for example, at Rochester students, some of those students might select Randolph as their school but a number of them are also selecting Middlebury or Woodstock, and those go to different technical centers. So you've got that and doing that, and then we also have the Chelsea and the Tunbridge, who a number of those students are electing to go to Thetford, which then is another uh, career center. So geographically, and this is something I've pointed out to the, the state AOE, is that you know what, the breakups were at the time that they were created might have worked, but at this point, the school consolidation has really hurt us. Um, so we need to relook at that. I think it needs to be by send, it needs to be by hometown maybe instead of the school of choice um, that the student makes in those schools that have school choice. For my two cents. <laughs> so are there any questions for Felicia about the Perkins Five grant? Okay, great work, Felicia. So the reports are enclosed. Um, we have director, superintendent, and financials. Do either Felicia or Lane have anything to um, expand upon what we have in front of us? Oh, she got all the good stuff. Sorry. Um, <laughs> at least, at least in terms of facilities. Um, this summer, they did a pretty good job. Get, I think they painted most of the hallways. You guys did a little bit of the work yourself. Yeah, the, yeah, the hallways only, we have, uh, if you haven't walked in the tech center, I, I would highly recommend you come, you know, when allowed to, or, or maybe we can do an evening there for one of these meetings if that would be uh, agreeable to everyone. You know, the facility is really tired. Um, there's, a, there's a lot that, that I see that needs to happen. Um, I know we have some reserve funds, um, but I'm being very cautious because I know that we might potentially require those reserve funds to float next year 
you know, in a really tough budget season. Um, but, you know, it's everything from, um, there's wiring and equipment that's in there from 20, 30 years ago that is no longer hooked up to anything that just needs to be removed. There's ceiling tiles that I haven't seen, uh, that look like they haven't been replaced in a very, very long time. So the hallways are, are looking good, but we're in the midst of, you know, we need some significant changes. And I think that's a piece of, you know, enrollment too, is our space needs to look inviting to kids. They need to say, hey, we've got a top-notch facility. And I don't think it's crying that out right now. So um, it's, it's kind of on the radar, and, and my hope is to kind of come up with a five-year plan for how we go about um, tackling some of these things. Yeah, we talked, we talked a little bit, touched on the idea of a renovations plan uh, because you pointed out some areas that do need some major work. Um, there is surplus money. Um, again, their RTCC budget is separate from the OSSD budget, and they have surplus money at the end of every year. Um, we're only allowed to keep 3% of that surplus. The rest has to be sent back. Um, but what we talked about is if um, they get a plan in place um, and then they can go out to bid on the next step in the plan, um, and have that bid sitting there so that come around April, we know what we have for surplus, we can use that money to actually do that renovation and do a piece each year um, instead of always giving the money back um, and reinvest it back in the kids and reinvest it back in the programming, which I think is a really good yeah. good way to get things moving. Um, yeah, but they they did a little, they did the, they did the paint, they did the lockers um, that they were looking for, uh, but there is quite a bit, especially in um, the machine shops. Yeah, um, the, those are the ones I think I. The core is where this yeah. really like we just need to really go through it and figure out what what needs to happen there to to get the electrical and equipment out that is no longer in service. Yeah. And the science piece that she mentioned is critical. Um, if they can get their own kind of integrated science person at the tech center, because as we start looking at trying to improve um, student performance on math, ELA, and science. The quirk with science is that it's the only um, exam that the final year of it is still in 11th grade. And so when a majority of our, our juniors are coming over and um, participating in the tech center, they're potentially missing out on a year of science, the year that they desperately needed to perform well on that Vermont science exam. And so that um, piece may help um, significantly in that work. So it's a, it's a good time. Okay. So the consent agenda is also in the packet, and if I could have a motion to approve the pieces of that. I move so. to approve the consent agenda. Second. Great. Um, any other comments? So all in favor of approving the consent agenda, say aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Um, any other correspondence or other items to discuss? I did want to ask if there's, um, if we need to do outreach to other ascending schools for representatives on this board. Is that something that? Yes, that's a really good question. Um, I was somewhat surprised when I came here to find that the school board was serving as the RTCC board. I think it's really important that we have industry partners and representatives from every school. Um, so I would like to work on that. One of the things that I tried to do this summer but didn't happen, um, just because I think everybody, all of the other administrators were so busy trying to prepare for reopening, was to get um, at least the regional principals together to start you know, building that relationship. Um, it's, it's on my radar and it's something that I'm gonna to continue to do. Um, and as I build that relationship, I hope to get representation on this board. Great. Well, I would like to again, um, thank you and welcome Felicia. It'd be great to have you on this team. Um, and we certainly hope that the year continues to go well and smoothly. Thank you Thanks so for being here. Appreciate being here. Thank you, Linda, for joining us. Actually, I was scrambling and taking notes, but I forgot you're taking them, so I didn't need to. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that closes the um, yeah, there's no, no, there's no executive, executive session needed, yeah. um, as far as I know. Not that I'm aware of. Yeah. And then um, we can close out at...
I'll let you make the call. Looks like it's 626. There you go. 